There is a point when you cannot walk away. I, I knew what was right, you know. Um, I had that inside that would tell me every time I did, you know, something I wasn't supposed to. And, um, and it, it kind of, you know, it, it ate me from the inside, you know. I just, I remember, like, multiple nights just going home and, like, I just, I just beat myself up constantly, you know. You know, why do you, you know, you know that's not right. And I got so torn between what, what I wanted to do or, you know, with these friends and all and what I knew was right to do. And we were just all, I think we were all crying. We were all in tears in the van. And I remember, well, the it was strong. so strong. It was so, so strong. strong. And I remember, like, finally I got to it, and I was just like, how do you really know if you got the Holy Ghost? Hmm. All it takes is a point of light, a ray of hope in the darkest night. If you see what's wrong and you try to make it right, you will be a point of light. Hello and welcome to another episode of Point of Light. My name is Josh Alano and today's interview is with Brother Michael Williams. I think maybe to um to get to that I might have to go back a little bit further. Yeah. If no, that's okay. Let's yeah. Go. Just um so Following this whole horse incident, you know, I guess I didn't even have to go back before that, or shortly after that. I was actually, I was baptized um, in Southern Missouri there. Um, I was baptized properly. Um, we was going to a church down there for a while. Um, however, I don't, I don't even know all the incidents because I was, I was fairly young. But whatever reason, we, we, we quit that church. We kind of, we had church at our house for a while. We had church, we kind of moved around there um different little spots that we had church Mm -hmm. and um but we didn't really have a message church there that we went to or you know that um so it was pretty difficult as a kid um growing up you know public school playing sports and all um it's a little bit difficult um not having that friend base of christians that believe the same as us so as as you know in the long run it kind of took a toll on me um i won't go into complete detail but um, I kind of went the wrong direction for a while and playing sports and then I went to college and, um, and I like, it got to a point where it was, it was bad enough that like, I, I knew what was right. You know, um, I had that inside that would tell me every time I did, you know, something I wasn't supposed to. And, um, and it, it kind of, you know, it, it ate me from the inside. You know, I just, I remember like multiple nights just going home and like, I just, I just beat myself up constantly, you know you know, why do you, you know, you know, that's not right. And I got so torn between what, what I wanted to do or, you know, with these friends and all and what I knew was right to do. And, um, and it got to a point, like after I'd got a, I was out of college for a couple months. I'd went for two years there and, um, and it really was the wrong direction for me. And, um, I got to a point one summer and I was just like, I was ready to do something like, and this was, this was a, a, a major turning point, you know? Um, and you could say a point of light because even though I didn't know what was, what I was doing at the time, now looking back, you know, I can see that it was definitely, um, something was leading me. Um, but it was definitely a crossroads, um, where I was either going to go way far off one way, or I decided I was just going to come to Idaho where my brother lived and um and visit for a month or two and um that month or two's been now like five years I think <laughs> so um so I packed up a few things and um I came to Idaho and at the time like there was no communication with anyone whatsoever and and so that's what brings me to Idaho and um here I get to Idaho and I decide I want to you know I'm, I'm gonna come just see what it's about and um I didn't like Idaho. I thought it was pretty ugly at the time. It was desert, you know, yeah. in myself. So, like, I had nothing here that I knew of that was just drawing me at the time, but, or that I could see. And then I get here, and it just so happens to be, I don't know, at the time there was two or three other young men my age, about my age, that also just kind of ended up in Idaho. And then a month or two later, a couple more, and there would end up being, I don't know, five or six of young guys around the same age. Right. And, um, that 
you know, like we started building this bond, you know, I, I didn't really know we had a lot, didn't have a lot of common, but we just kind of, we just kind of meshed and it was, it was really cool at the, you know, looking back now how it actually all worked out. And, um, we just, we, you know, we started to grow and like, it took me a while, um, cause I was pretty hard headed, but I eventually started, you know, kind of digging in. I was reading a little bit and we was having, started having these young, these young men's like, Bible studies and stuff, and, you know, at the time, you know, I remember I was coming, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing, I just kind of half-heartedly, and then looking back, you can kind of see, like, as it went on, like, and then other people talking, you know, like, seeing, you know, seeing me come in, and then I start coming in, like, I've actually read what we're supposed to be reading, and um, and then yeah, I start asking questions, I start asking questions and things, you know, and, and this is, I think, was a major, also, you know, major, I wouldn't say change of direction because I, I blink I was going kind of in the right direction but it was kind of like narrowing that that road that that road that I was following you know and and um that I didn't really know what it was but you know now I can see what brought me to Idaho and on all these things and and um I started focusing a little more started going to church more regular and, and um I started to grow and and um I remember uh, brother Josh talking you know the young the young guy, you know, and telling us, you know, well, you know, if you want to do something for God, you know, you got to do something for God's people. And, you know, and, and like, I just started, I started to get that missionary burden, you know, and, um, and, um, yeah, so that's when, that's kind of the direction I started going. Once I got to that point, I'd, I'd been working for a brother in the church, working construction, and we was working out of town. And, and, um, there was this, this missionary trip coming up. We was going to New Mexico. This is what you, now we're kind of what brought me to there, and um, and all of us, you know, were, you know, most of the young men were going to be going on this trip, and um, and I, you know, I was me as one of them, and um, so like I was pretty anxious and ready, and it was going to be cool, and there was a whole group of guys going, like, no one in their right mind would want to miss this trip, and um, and then I just get a phone call out of the blue, and um, about a job offer that I'd I'd been I had worked for most of my most of my younger life, you know, in college and stuff, I'd, you know, been practicing welding and I wanted this welding job and it was, it paid a lot of money. I'd be a traveling welder and like, it was what I wanted to do. And, um, and I got a phone call and it's like, Hey, we, we have some job openings and, um, we're going to be hiring seven guys. And cause I had turned in a, a, my welding sheet or whatever. And they're like, and we want, um, to know if you, if you want the job. And I was like, I was like, oh man, I'm like, well, let me give you a call back, you know. So, I at that time I, I called Brother Josh, and um, I was like, you know, ask Brother Josh, cause it took me a while at this point to um, to really embrace the leadership, you know, the church, you know, it was um, to me they seemed so far out there, you know, for a long time they just seemed like these, so much higher above me, you know, and before I really got a revelation of who they are, they're like they're they're there for me, they're there for exactly what I was. Exactly. having trouble I was right. fighting you know and they were in my corner and, and once I kind of found that out and you know I started using them as that and asking questions you know it really made a difference in my life but so I I'd called brother Josh and he's talking you know and I was like you know that I was telling him about the job and he's you know and, and he's like well he's like um you know there's maybe nothing wrong with you maybe going and checking it out for a month you know and then do the mirror test and you look at yourself in the mirror after a month you know, he was, he was encouraging, you know, but at the time, but he gave me my, you know, my answer was there, and I just, you know, I I overlooked it, but, you know, look, do the mirror test if you look, you know, if you look worse off, and maybe it's not good for you, maybe if, you, if you're okay, it's one thing, he's like, but remember, Brother Branham, you know, he said that if there's any doubt at all, then don't, you know, don't do it, and at that time, when he, as soon as he said that, it popped in my head is the New Mexico trip, hmm. and this trip, I'm like, because they wanted me to leave that week. The end of that week, they wanted me to leave on Monday. The end of that week was a New Mexico trip, and you know, coincidentally <laughs> enough, <laughs> coincidentally <laughs> enough, yeah. So, right. um, so that came to my head, but I immediately started um, started battling it, you know, and I, and for long I had justified it that you know that there's going to be plenty of trips. It's not that big of a deal. This job could be a lifetime. You know, all these things going through my head. So I justified it, and I had talked to my boss. Um, and I was like, so I'm like, you know, I think this was like on Thursday and I'm like, so I'm just letting you know that I'm going to finish out this week and I'm going to be going, traveling, welding next week. 
you know, and he's just like, you know, it's a shock to him, you know, it's a shock to everybody. And I, um, I let them, they call me back and I was like, yeah, I'll be there. Like, okay. They told me everything I needed. They needed me there on Monday with everything I needed for orientation. And I was set and I was ready to go. And that was, that was Wednesday evening. And so like I had it all set up, good to go. And then Friday, you know, it was just like I had made my decision. That's what I was going to do. And Friday they called me back. And I don't know why this, this doesn't happen, but in a company that's big, I mean, but they just called me back and they're like, hey, so, um, yeah, don't shoot the messenger, but we don't need you anymore. We're not going to hire you. And, like, mm. you know, and it was just, like, it was the answer, you know, and then looking back, like, you know, like, that thought that came to my mind, as soon as Brother Josh said that, you know, if there was any doubt, there was that doubt, and I justified it. But God kept me from it, and, you know, and for, for whatever right. reason. And, and now I know why, but so I don't go on this job, and I get to go on this New Mexico trip. And that's what brought me there. So yeah. we go on this trip to New Mexico, and it's just absolutely amazing. There with so many brothers. I remember we, um, I don't even remember how many. There's probably 20, I think 30. It was over, I 20 think it was something, over 30. 20. Yeah, 30. Yeah. So, like, and there's these these brothers, um, Brother Dan, Brother Floyd, these that, like, I look up to so much. They're just like, you know, they're just out of reach, you know. F- you know, it kind of seems like, you know, they're just like, I just, just you know, just an all, you know, and we show up and we meet them all at the Starbucks. And I remember getting out of the van and looking around and it's just like Colorado, 30. Right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, there's just 30 brothers and it's just like, and my heart was just like so full, like just bubbling over, like, like just for that, that memory, like, I don't, you know, it's just amazing. And like, I was so happy, you know, and like, I couldn't even believe that I was there. And, um, but we went on to have these amazing meetings and um, just saw the Lord, and, you know, and and um, just to see our leaders, even though, like, we didn't really have, a, like, a big part, per se, in these meetings, like, to mm-hmm. see the leadership, you know, and God working through them. Right. It was it was incredible. And then, but I think the whole trip may have been for me. I don't know. But um, on the way back is where you're talking about in Ogden. We um, were driving back, and I remember most of the way back— I, I was crying, I think. You yeah. Know? I th- <laughs> we, um, I think, yeah, no, that's um, definitely consensus. Just, There's a lot of tears. So. Just in the, um, in the minivan, you know, and I, and I don't like to cry, to be honest, like, you know, um, but for me to cry, you know, I was most of the way I was, it's 18 hour drive. And I remember sitting in the van with yourself mm-hmm. for, I mean, we switched on and off, but at this time in Ogden, it was me and you, Brother Shane, Brother Shane Daniel. and Brother Daniel. Yeah. And, um, and I had just been battling this whole time um, that I'd got baptized at a young age and that I didn't even know what I was doing, that did it, was I really sincere about it? You know, all these things were just, I was battle, battle, battle. And, you know, and every time I'd see someone get baptized and, I, and like something would come on me, like, like you didn't really mean, you, you know, you should be getting baptized too, kind of a thing. And I, I'd battle it and like, do I have the Holy Ghost? And, um. I mean, we like the conversation. I can't even. There's no way to lead you up to where what led us up to this situation. But I remember we were just asking questions, like, and it was just like question and answers. And me and you were just like, bam, bam. We were just feeding off each other, and we were just, and we were just all. I think we were all crying. We were all in tears in the van. And I remember well, the presence of God. Was it was strong. so strong. It was so, so strong. strong. And I remember, like, finally I got to it, and I was just like, "How do you really know if you got the Holy Ghost?" Mm. And and I, I think they both said at the same time, maybe, and and it was just it stood out, and um, you know that's my that's my my tide post, you know I can never go back past that, you know I hear you know tide posts or pile rocks, you know you can only go back so far, and I remember and turned around, and they both, I I don't even know if it's possible, but I think they both looked at me, to be honest, <laughs> and they're like, and like this conversation that we've been having, you know, is a really good sign, and, you know, and you know and. From that day on, I never had to battle that. Like, like, and I don't know what it was, but I've never had to battle that. Like, yeah, I mean, every now and then something might just kind of like come mm-hmm. in, and it's just like at that point I can just kind of brush it off and it goes away. And it's, and you know, and that that was a major point in my life, you know, and also that I can see the hand of God working all that and the whole job, you know, and and you know, as my dream, you know, that I wanted, and God just keeping me actually from that, you know. And instead of being bitter about it or whatever, you know, like I seen God's hand in it, and right. um, you know, and like that's just one of the 
the main points in my life that I can always go back to and like I can only go to there and there's there's nowhere below that that I can go Michael we really appreciate you sharing this part of your testimony and the specific thing that God did for you and I think um, for the rest of us it's just important to to realize that like in brother Michael's life there was something there that was there's this little seed of doubt and like the prophet of God said we if there's a question or if there's a doubt about something maybe you shouldn't do it and sometimes we have to listen to that and we have to be proactive and you know turn from that but sometimes through the grace of God he's going to take it away absolutely you know and for you it was it was that job and there's this dream job something you've worked for as a young man obviously something that's probably going to set you up in life financially and he literally takes the job away from you to give you this opportunity to give you a tie post absolutely and i you know i that's really amazing to me and we always always appreciate those things that god does in our lives so uh, thank you for sharing your testimony we hope this episode was a blessing to you and we look forward to seeing you again next time god bless you all it takes is a point of light a ray of hope in the darkest night if you see what's wrong and you try to make it